Hello. Hello. I see we have, hey Kai, how are you? It's been a while, it's been a while. Hello, we have a number of different people who are joining us. B Ball for Life 76 joined. Hello, oh, <laughs> yes. You know, I have to change it up <laughs> a little bit here and there. Uh, I hope Sila is doing well. And please, happy Thanksgiving to you. And definitely send my love to, to Sila as well um, and let her know I said happy Thanksgiving happy Thanksgiving to you and your family you know today is really actually a, um, a very quick live I wanted to come on and do a live uh, so that I can uh, oh she's doing good yes we're doing well me and my family are doing well uh, doing as much as we can do uh, to uh, to stay uh, in quarantine and stay safe. Hello, Sunday uh, 716. Um, so yes, you know, I the purpose for today's live is really to say thank you to everyone who is a part of the Black Travelers Network community. Uh, the topic is how to travel in uh, 2021 uh, with without m much risk you know part of why everyone uh is so nervous right now uh is because of what's going on with the global pandemic uh we have cassandra gauz uh thank you for joining afro tours bahia hello how are you and uh, so you know it's a challenging time for those of us who are uh, in the travel industry uh, for for people who are not uh, prepared uh, for you know this kind of environment it could be a bit scary and a bit problematic but there in my mind uh, and this is something I've talked to a number of our travelers uh, about is there's really only one way uh, to travel in uh, 2021 and I say without risk but it really comes down to uh, limiting uh, the risk that you have and removing as much of it as possible and that is um, it's not glamorous it's not sexy but it's very simple <laughs> hello sister uh, my Brazilian sister um, but it really comes down to travel insurance um, Kai, uh, Kai, Kai is still on. Kai knows a lot about uh, eliminating the risk. Uh, as as Kai uh, Lynn, you guys should follow her. Um, is uh, a licensed uh, uh, life has has her own life insurance agency. So you should definitely uh, check her out. Um, but you have to buy travel insurance. That really is the only way uh, when it comes to removing as much risk as possible. You know, we've talked about a number of different trips that we plan to uh, have in 2021. Uh, and for some reason, you know, it's so interesting. I love talking to our people about travel, um, but I always get people who are really confused about it. And they think that, you know, there are so many people who's like, well, what if this happens and what if th that happens? And the only way to really um, exactly uh, in Kaya saying, especially for o overseas travel and especially during a uh, health risk time. Absolutely. Um, it, it really is the only way to do it, because when you think about uh, traveling, uh, especially overseas, uh, there are some countries right now who will not even allow you to enter unless you show proof of travel insurance. Uh, 
And so I want to be very clear with with those of you who are on and for those of you who who catch the playback is that if you intend on traveling internationally uh, at any point in time within the next six months to a year, even two years, uh, it's quite possible that the country you enter in will require you to tr to show proof of travel insurance. There are a number of different travel insurance providers out there, um, but I want to, especially in this time of uncertainty, uh, I'd like for people to, to be very clear um, that one of the more popular policies, travel insurance policies, that's a little bit more expensive, but well worth the money uh, for people who want to uh, reduce or eliminate as much of the um, as much of the risk as possible is what they call cancel at any time for any reason uh, travel insurance policies. There are certain companies that uh, definitely uh, provide that. Um, so I want to be clear with with everyone that that is something that you should definitely look into. Do not look to travel outside the country uh, if you if you don't have that. And it's also more than OK to buy more than one type. If you're concerned that the coverage on one policy may not um, be good enough for the protection that you need uh, and you want just a little extra um, that's also allowed. Um, there are a number of different types of, of policies. And so one of the things that we actually require now that we didn't before, um, but given the environment, we do require everyone who travels uh, with us to show proof of travel insurance in order uh, to travel uh, with us. The other um, thing. So that's like the big thing. That's the whole point of this conversation is to make sure um, that everyone knows about how, number one, certain countries will not allow you uh, to enter if you don't have uh, travel insurance. And some of them actually want to see that with your travel insurance policy, that it shows um, that it, there is some sort of coverage for uh, a COVID-19 test. Um, it just really depends on uh, where you're traveling to. Uh, and some of them just want to see that you have basic uh, health insurance coverage uh, in order to allow you to enter the country. Um, so that's something that, you know, you should really do anyway. But for those folks who, you know, we always have people who don't necessarily uh, do it if they don't have to. I would just say put it in your mind and just assume that you have to do it. Um, and so that's that's the, the main point. The other thing I want people to uh, to also be mindful of in traveling in 2021, um, you know, it's okay and you kind of should, you know, if you want to be a little safer and, and just learn a little bit more about l the latest developments, it's good to reach out to that particular country's uh, consulate or if they have an embassy here in the United States um, or regardless of which city they have their consulate in. I always generally just give the consulate or the embassy a call and just speak to whomever answers the phone and ask them about some of the latest uh, developments when it comes to uh, the country. And so uh, uh, Kai said, uh, you said you actually had to use it once. You had a trip to China that got canceled by the government. See. And it, it, it makes a difference. It absolutely makes a difference. Um, you know, I've had to support a number of our, our, our travel, uh, our travelers who have had, uh, to file, um, uh, travel insurance claims. One, uh, particular traveler, uh, comes to mind. I, I, I told her, you know, you need travel insurance before you depart. She did not listen. And in the end, uh, she technically, if she would have followed it, she could have had her whole entire trip paid for. And so after that, I said, you know what, we're going to make sure uh, that folks uh, um, require it. Because in her situation, what happened, she had a, a major issue that came up where they essentially, where the airline uh, lost her luggage. 
and they it was never found and so if she would have had the travel insurance based off of the value that was in her suitcase and all that she packed she pretty much probably would have had uh, her entire trip paid for uh, but you know um that will no longer be an issue because <laughs> because it is now a, a requirement um but you know uh, just going back to to what what kai says you never know when you will need it you never know if you will need it and when you're traveling especially internationally anything can absolutely happen um but as i was saying uh the consulates uh are, are there uh, to to assist um you know assist you uh the embassy is also there so if you want to just find out some of the latest information if you want to find out you know is uh, how are things looking in that particular country uh what should i be thoughtful of it's it's okay and uh, advisable uh for you to pick up the phone and and give uh, the consulates a call. Uh, they are usually uh, located in one of a few major cities in the United States with, um, you know, New York, DC, uh, Houston, Texas being, and Los Angeles being some of the most popular uh, places where you f will find uh, consulates and embassies from all over the world located. So definitely uh, make a note of that. Also, uh, checking with airline providers that service a particular country. You know, a lot of people don't think uh, uh, to, to, to do this, but the airlines are on the forefront of uh, everything that's happening, especially when it comes to uh, COVID-19, what the requirements are uh, that are coming down from the country regarding uh, tourism. So oftentimes, if you have a country uh, that is that you're interested in traveling to, a number of their uh, line staff are at least prepped on the basics of any uh, new developments that may uh, be coming down the pipeline. And some of them know a little bit more uh, in terms of what has not been released to the public. And so, uh, hello, TJ Renee. Uh, and so I would just advise you to um, make it a point to have like a little checklist for those of you who want to remove as much of the risk as possible with the with the travel insurance um, being on the at the at the top of your list of things. And so some people have have uh, uh, like reached out to us and have sort of asked like how much can we can, can you expect to pay uh, when it comes to the travel insurance. It depends on how long you're gone. It depends on which country you're traveling to. Uh, but, you know, I would say policies can range anywhere from 50 something bucks to around 70 something bucks for a, a relatively inexpensive policy um, that will cover you throughout your travel duration. And the other would be, of course, um, the cancel at any time for any reason, travel insurance. That's gonna be a little bit more expensive. And when I say, a little bit more expensive. I'm talking roughly. Uh, I've seen policies in the in the range of 150 to 200 dollars. Um, you know, again, it just depends on the company. It depends on where you're going, your age. Um, you know, it, it it just depends. And the because these are all most travel insurance policies are uh, temporary policies term, which would be the equivalent of your term life policies for those of you who uh, have life insurance and you know about life insurance. So it's very, very uh, similar uh, to, to those types of policies. And so I just wanted to make sure uh, we came on Mr. Wen. Uh, and uh, Mr. 123, I just wanted to make sure uh, that uh, we came on to uh, make sure as you're thinking about next year uh, that you you make it a point to do this. And the other uh, the other point that I want to mention, um, because 
you know, some people uh, are, are confused about, do you buy the travel insurance before you leave? Do you buy the travel insurance um, after you do your booking? And I was, I always tell people, like, the minute you make a, a payment, uh, whether it's a deposit or um, just anything that you pay towards your trip, you buy a flight, you will want to start purchasing your traveler's insurance. Some travel insurance providers will give you a specific timeline and say, you know, you have within 14 to 21 days after you've put any money towards that trip before you have to uh, secure your travel insurance. And so um, I, I want, I, I always advocate for people to buy it on the front end after you have paid like your first penny <laughs> towards a, a trip. Um, but there are also policies that if you have not uh, done that, uh, that you can still purchase it. Um, a lot of our travelers in the past would purchase a, a, a policy, a travel insurance policy right before they depart. Uh, I don't recommend that. I do recommend it uh, to for you to do it uh, sooner rather than than later, uh, as as opposed to um, waiting, because you again, you never know uh, what could happen. Uh, incredible. LLC join. Hello to you too. Uh, and so again, the sooner you get it done, the better. And I just want to say thank you to everyone. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, this is a time of gratitude. That's why I say this is the season of gratitude. And I couldn't be more thankful for uh, our, you know, for my family, uh, for, you know, the Black Travelers Network community, uh, for all of you who took the time to just join, you know, to just join this live. I mean, it's it's so um, as someone who who has who doesn't come on uh, to do very many uh, live uh, live recordings and I am this is one of my own like personal challenges for myself uh, for as we exit 2020 and we enter into 2021 I am challenging myself to do more uh, lives so that I am able to cover uh, more topics uh, and also to bring some of you uh, on uh, who want to share uh, in your uh, thoughts and your perspectives uh, about what's happening, and you know, I'm still learning how to how to uh, maneuver this this Instagram live. But is there anyone I want to see? Is there anyone who wants to to come on and have uh, words uh, about anything uh, that you're thinking, whether it's about Thanksgiving, about travel, or about next year? Um, there should be something that allows you to do that. I'm not sure. But, um, you know, with that being said, uh, thank you, uh, everyone. I don't think I'm not seeing anyone uh, who wants to to do it. But I will uh, make sure, like I said, to, to do more of these. And so uh, this should just give uh, us a chance to stay abreast and, and stay connected uh, to what's happening in the exciting world of travel that it continues to change all the time. And um, many blessings to you. Many thanks to each one of you. And have a very, very happy Thanksgiving, brothers and sisters. <music>